bow, 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 bow. Market structure dance, but I, 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 I just started and I can't there, stop it. It's like, it's bad. It's so bad, but I just can't stop myself. <laughs> you should just have that playing everywhere you go, Tim. Just I have, have a speaker. Tim just Tim Quas bow, 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 bow. That's not a bad idea. I might have to take, like, you see me on the ski slope, you know, yeah, just, just blasting out there. <laughs> <laughs> how, how are the slopes this week, Tim? How are the slopes? They, uh, the, the slopes have been fantastic. We haven't had, well, it snowed overnight, so uh, we've, we've got some fresh powder uh, this mm. morning. But the temperatures have been perfect, and you need cold temperatures to preserve good snow. And uh, we've had those, and, and uh, it's just been spectacular. But don't tell, because we don't want the riffraff showing up. Huh. Well, the okay, question so just, is, let's just keep this uh, uh, among us. Okay. Did we get some fresh powder on this market? Mm. Uh, well, it's a great, it, it's a good opening question. And it, it, so I will, I will answer it this way because it, the, you know, what happened Fridays, we had this huge, really unbelievable jobs number and I will set it up with a story. So that it's not my story. Yeah, like so that. I'm a huge fan of uh, David Mamet. He's a writer, you know, and uh, uh, a very a very good writer. And he's you know he's behind a lot of movies. One of these is a movie called State and Maine that starred Alec Baldwin. And uh, at the beginning of the movie, Alec Baldwin uh, Alec Baldwin is the lecherous old guy driving around with this uh, the underage girl, and and they're drinking and racing around in this car, and they wreck, and she may have expired, and he. Uh, Alec Baldwin crawls out of the car and looks around and he says, well, that happened. And so I thought that was a perfect, that's a perfect setup for what happened on Friday. Well, that happened. Yeah. Right? So, yeah. so we got this. Yeah, I had told edge users that the only thing that would derail this beautiful supply demand balance that we've got in the equity market would be something unexpected. And uh, I propose that uh, perhaps the unexpected would be a jobs number that was bad. Well, it was the exact opposite, right? This, we get this colossal jobs number that everybody mm -hmm. has to feed into their models. And what will that do to the market? Well, if it was purely rational, you would say, well, we would all take that sort of in stride and say, well, we could look around at the economy and say, it doesn't make sense that there are a half million new jobs. By the way, if you look at the, yeah. the unadjusted, if you look at the unadjusted number, that's a seasonal adjustment. It's not what happened, people. It is mm -hmm. a model. There is a, they take the numbers and they apply some seasonal adjustments to it to come up with that. If you, take, if you look at the unadjusted number, which you have to go all the way to the end of the press release to see jobs fell 110,000. So I don't know mm. which is right, but that data will be yeah. absorbed by global macro money, by asset allocation models, all these things that are much, much larger than stock picking. And I don't know what effect it will have. I can tell you what effect it had, because that's, that's observable. What, is it, what it did in the math is observable. And what it did, interestingly, was chop momentum by a good third. And I can show you that if you like. Yeah, so, let's take a quick look here. Let's get to the good stuff, the gold, what everybody wants to see, the market structure edge, of course. Let's get back like, past my rendition of David Mamet to something actually useful. Uh, <laughs> you know, so, we're, we're the quants here, the quants. We want the math. We want the math, Tim. So, uh, so for anybody who's new, this is the this is the market structure edge dashboard. And so the first, you know, the only thing I trade uh, are one and two. All oh. the rest of the information on the dashboard is informative to me, and I'm going to look at it all. I think about broad market sentiment, context, what's occurring in the cadence and calendar of the market, and then divergences. I'm always looking for these divergences because that's how you make money. And it doesn't really matter what it is. And there's you know, proof all around us of, of the fact that that is true. Uh, you know, Carvana is up 212%. It could go bankrupt. Uh, Bed Bath & Beyond's up 32%. It is in the process of going bankrupt. AMC Theaters is up 54%. 
Peloton's up 100%. I could go on and on and on. Peloton continues to lose money. The rate at which it loses money is down. Uh, but, you know, we've long been told by economists that rising rates are bad for money losing enterprises. We'll explain those, right? All the tech stocks have soared in a, in a rising interest rate environment, and nobody wants to talk about that, right? Why did why, I thought that would be hurt? Wouldn't that hurt those kind of stocks? Well, it's not the way the market works. Here's momentum. On Thursday, there were 35 components, and the math just finds those. You know, we give the you give you know we use uh, quantitative instructions, and we look at the composition of it. On Friday, with the data from Friday, it dropped to 20. Mm. I mean, that's a dramatic drop in the momentum opportunities. Tech still leads. The key behavior that is over the past week leading these stocks is fast trading, market making by proprietary traders. Uh, and, but that is telling. You would say, well, why would a great jobs number chop momentum? And you could come up with a reasonable answer. You could say, well, the market is run by the Fed. And so the Fed uh, now is telling us what that jobs number is likely to raise rates even further. It's just going to do what the, the Fed's going to do what the Fed's going to do, which is get rates to 5%. That's a fact. Uh, so that is the effect, Mitch. It brings momentum down. It's not gone, but you mm -hmm. have to be aware now, and maybe that's part of it. Dennis, I heard you, you say that, that you know you watched a point come off the S&P 500. It may be nothing more than the developing effect of the, of the uh, slowing of momentum in the mm -hmm. marketplace. Mm -hmm. That's going to happen. That we can talk yeah. about where you go from here, but that is that will be an effect. That's a fantastic point. Yeah. I mean, we have had you know every algorithmic system just jumping and jumping, and I mean right. they jump on different headlines too. Like I was saying this morning before we got on the show, Dell, they yep. they they they're cutting sixty five hundred jobs. So the algos don't read past the cutting of the jobs; they simply just buy because yep. they're cutting jobs. Right. And I mean, you read the next line: cutting jobs because they see soft demand. <laughs> I mean, this is bullish now. This is bullish. You cut 6,500 jobs. That's just a buy, buy, buy signal for the algos. But I'm like, I'm reading the second part of it. Softening demand is not usually when I want to go into a company, but they don't care at this point in time. So until you break that algorithmic, you know, action where they're just randomly buying on that initial headline, maybe we just continue to have FOMO running rampant because the one that who's got the FOMO the most isn't even the retail. It appears to be the algos. Exactly. Uh, mm. Rivian is a great example of what you're talking about. You know, is there is there a uh, big demand for the no, Rivian's going to start making e-bikes, but just to t try to come up with something to create revenue. And they mm -hmm. you know they've cut, I forget how much, half their workforce, something like that. And yeah. uh, and the stock's gone up 30 percent in in uh, two weeks. Uh, so are those rational things? No, but it's a great lesson, traders. This is the problem. No offense to the, the fine folks at CNBC, uh, in, including our, our, you know, our friend Jim Cramer, who's always talking about, you know, you find these great, uh, these companies that are better than other companies and you own those. Well, that doesn't guarantee you returns. That's just not the way the market works. The market isn't a, isn't a, isn't a place full of stories. It's a place full of products called equities. And, mm -hmm. you know, tens of trillions of dollars. I could rattle them off. So, you know, BlackRock, Vanguard, State Street, Fidelity, UBS, JP Morgan, Morgan Stanley, those seven firms manage over $40 trillion and over 70% of the assets they manage follow a model. Their target date funds, their asset allocation models, and they take some money and they put them into products called equities. And they're not examining the stories of these equities. They're looking for equities with size and liquidity. And that's what they put the money into. And that can suck up all the junk, too, because it all moves it with the flow of money. That's the way that the market works. Well, you, the beautiful thing about that, traders, is that you can see it happening. You can see where the money goes and when it stops going there. I could look at Rivian and say, is it over? No, not quite, but it's getting there. There's That's, still strong yeah, demand. Tell us about this. Yeah. yeah. So, so here's strong demand. Supply actually declined. Generally, strong demand and falling supply will lift price. There's a very high chance in the next couple of days that you could make money 
trading Rivian. Is it a good story? Well, I don't know. They've got good technology. You know, they've got this young genius who runs that firm, but their fundamentals aren't great. They're a long, long, long way from making money, but you could make money trading that because that's the way the stock market works. I wish it wasn't that way, but it's great for math. Math is a great way to approach the equity market. And, and that's what we do with Edge. A little self-service there, but that's what we do. All right. Now, um, of course, you can see on this one that the sentiment was like on 10. Tim, yep. would you be waiting to see that sentiment change before getting out and running towards those profits? Or would you go ahead and just run towards the profits as you're starting to see the price action in the overall market come down? Great, great question and a very helpful one for users, for, for everybody who's an investor in the, in the stock market. What do you do? How do you know when to exit? You, know, you can yeah. say, well, I have, a, I have a price point I'm looking for. Well, there's no guarantee, right? <laughs> there's mm -hmm. no guarantee the price that you have assigned to something will ever manifest. I mean, I had a couple of things I wanted to sell on Friday and uh, they didn't get there. Well, how do you know when to come and go? And you're exactly right, Mitch. You want to see one side or the other change. If demand falls or supply rises, generally I will leave. It's not an mm -hmm. absolute. I'll show you an example of this. I think this is this is useful. The interesting thing is industrials. Industrials right now, they're very close to pre replacing in a tech in the momentum portfolio. Look at Wab Tech. So Wab is both has the characteristics of both what I would call low volatility meaning it spends a lot of time at five and the potential for momentum because it is this big deficit in supply. That is exactly the condition I look for. Notice what it, it's done the last five days. Very nice returns there. Now they're not, they're not the 30% that you get in a, in a highly speculative trade like AMC or Bed Bath & Beyond, but this collapse in supply and steady demand is you know that it is likely to produce gains. This little uptick in supply, is that enough to leave? Probably not. But if it goes over the trend line, I'm out. That's, that is a great signal. Or if this dips, I'm out. And if we use a momentum example, uh, you know, here's what I mean by industrials showing some real strength. I can come over here and sort this by sector. Tech is the top item, but look at industrials, is right in there too. And I'd come over here and say, WMS, TRU, BLDR, RHI, this is a, a labor supplier. Naturally, they're gonna have some, some momentum. Those are all things that are at 10 and have declining supply. They all have the propensity to deliver gains. Uh, and it doesn't matter what their stories are. And the, you know, the beautiful thing about demand is it reflects everything that is known, all the other inputs, everything hedge funds know, all the information they've consumed, it's all in here. And so all we have to do is say, well, which things have divergent supply and demand like that? I mean, that is just awesome. You know, 10, it's up a little bit, but the supply has dropped. Even if it's down today, that's almost better because I would say, well, I have a very good chance of, I can even know what I'm gonna try, try to make. I want half of that number. 6.6% .6 is how much it moves on average every day between intraday mm -hmm. high and low price. And yeah. so if it's down 3%, great time to buy it. If it goes up 3%, you're out. That's a great way, low, low risk, high probability way to make, a, make money in a market that makes no sense. There are 500,000 new jobs, folks. The economy isn't about to boom. Those things are not true. The high interest rates that people are going to have to pay are going to begin to hit people and governments and businesses, and that's Absolutely. what you're seeing. Right. All these people laying off, all these companies laying off uh, workers, that is a sign of a slowing economy, not a booming one. All right, that's a fact, and and we have to be be honest and clear-eyed about that. But it won't stop you from making money. Tim, one quick question for you. Uh, we were just talking about different stocks, different characters, characteristics, where they came in. That you know, the Apple on Friday. Do you find yep. find with market structure edge that you know, like it, that it maybe it might be more accurate with like the higher volume stocks, or is it just generic where where it just applies because we were looking at something like children's place today what's uh what's your take on that i'll take a look at that so apple really quickly thank you joel uh we and so at the live demo on thursday with edge users uh we talked about this we looked at apple google amazon and uh, we uh, said apple is likely no matter what they report the stock is likely to rise because demand is very strong still 
And the, the fangs are the biggest piece. Of, you can't even call them that now. Just call them big tech, right? But you look at this strong demand and falling supply, that's a, that, that's likely to rise. Doesn't matter if they report a, a quarterly decline in revenue. Uh, so children's place. I don't even know that one, Joel. Uh, so <laughs> P-L-C-E. <laughs> yeah, I got you. And there no are very few tickers I don't know, but that was I don't know that one. So uh, retail. So, it's right next so, to Build a Bear in the mall. <laughs> yeah, you go in there, you take your kid to Build a Bear, and then you get them some new clothes at Children's Place. Okay, okay, well, that's good to know. That's good to know, Joel. It's My wife very did good. It a month ago. I, is that right? Okay. Yeah, that's how it goes. I, 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 our, these analytics are less useful for stocks under ten dollars. Too okay. much standard deviation. Okay. Uh, that's where it's weakest. Otherwise, it works for everything because it doesn't matter what kind of what stock you are. Reg NMS, Regulation National Market System, governs all stocks in the national market system. All the math is the same. The best execution rules are the same. The order hand handling rules are the same, and that's why we can measure the data. This. Joel, this looks beautiful. You know, it it's a 10 out of 10 falling supply. The only trouble is is the supply side is almost 60%. But that tends to continue to deliver gains. So if you're in, if you're walking into a children's place, you might as well buy PLCE while you're at it. <laughs> but be ready to leave when either side changes. Yeah, and then news is the problem here too, Tim. And obviously, they've come out with news. They've lowered guidance. The stock is down. They are buying the dip on this thing. Yeah, they How did fast? And again, does news just change everything when you get a fundamental new piece of information? Does that instantly change your flows? Um, how does that affect your trading systems when you get, you know, the news boom, yeah. and then you have a big price change? How does that your system adjust for that? It's a it's a great question, and I always earnings more than anything else. So mm -hmm. I always, you know, I tell folks do this. You can look up the earnings calendar. I prefer Yahoo's because it's a very user friendly, free right, thing that call. you can do. Yeah, right? Benzinga, <laughs> come on. <laughs> <laughs> All you have to do is do this, right? You look over here. Before I buy it during earnings season, I'm always going to check, right? Yeah. You know, when are they reporting results? March 7th. So, yes, news matters. And it's a great mm -hmm. way to combine Benzinga and Market Structure Edge. Use Benzinga for news. Find out what's going on so that you, yeah. you aren't caught out. Uh, but I will tell you, supply and demand trump news. Uh, I, okay. I will often do this. Morgan Stanley cuts cuts uh, somebody to uh, out uh, to underperform, and I look at it and it's ten out of ten, and it has declining supply. I'm buying that because the because the dip won't last. You have a chance in the next how long? What's your period of time? Very rarely do I own stocks for longer than five days. That's generally somewhere in there because I'm going to make my two or three percent that I'm after, uh, and uh, that but. That you will have that opportunity. Check for news, down on news, but you see the strong supply demand equation. The chance that you make money the next two days is very, very high. It's not it's not perfect, but it's very high. And that's all you can do, traders. You want something Love that it. increases the probability that you produce a return. Love it. Definitely. Um, I would say that it gives you sometimes the answer to the current environment in a quantifiable way. So it does. Uh, uh, I love it. Love it. Definitely. Tim Quas, like always, Market Structure Edge. You guys can check out this information yourself. Get your free trial. We'll have you back on, Tim. Have a great week.